Hawaii is home to some of the most beautiful natural terrain in the world, perfect for riding motorcycles. One road in particular, Hana Highway, is arguably in the top 10 most picturesque roads in the world. The locals call it Divorce Highway. I wanted to find out why. I grabbed the wife, we rented a Harley Davidson Road Glide, and we set out for a voyage. This is my day on the road to Hana. So the road to Hana, from what I understand, is one of the most scenic roads in the world. And so we're gonna take it out, do it on a Harley, of course. I wouldn't have it any other way. And yeah, we're gonna take out, take out a Road Glide today, 2018 model year Road Glide Standard. And uh, yeah, check it out, see how it goes. I wanted to share with you guys a couple tips as well. If you plan on doing the road to Hana, you have some expectations and maybe some things to help you out as well. So tip number one, and this one actually pertains to any rental experience that you may be doing, but if you're gonna be renting a bike, I always recommend renting a motorcycle from an authorized dealership that is a full service dealership. So if you're gonna do the road to Hana and come here to Maui, I would highly recommend this dealership here, Maui Harley-Davidson. It's a multi-line dealership, so they sell other bikes than just Harley-Davidson's, but really the, the main reason why this is a good spot to rent a bike is they are a full service dealership, privately owned motor motorcycles by the dealership and they are very very well maintained there's nothing worse than paying a bunch of money and getting to the rental place and finding that you have a bike that hasn't been properly maintained and worse worse yet if you have a problem out on the road that ruins your trip I can't think of anything worse and on this road to Hana and we were in a kind of a remote area for a couple hours and it would have been a really bad situation had we had a breakdown so yeah definitely if you're able to rent a bike from an authorized Harley Davidson dealership. All right, so we did all the paperwork and everything. So we got everything all set up. We got our half helmets here. We're going out on our 2018 Road Glide, vivid black. This is the beauty right here. Let's see how many miles we do today. Got 4140 on the odometer. If you know you're gonna need clip-on accessories for the docking hardware in the back, like passenger backrests, then you should always ask for that stuff in advance to make sure they put it on there and they have it available. Another thing that a lot of dealers will have is tour packs. If you ever need like a tour pack, that's a good idea to ask for that in advance because they may actually have it. 
uh, Jesse, our rental guy, who was extremely good, by the way, uh, offered a tour pack in advance, but we opted not to get it. And we just got the, the passenger backrest for this ride. So yeah, we'll, we'll see how it goes. They say that we should uh, maybe get a little bit of rain. I guess on that side of the island, on the east side of the island, it's always raining over there. So we really don't have proper riding gear, basically t-shirts and some long pants. So, you know, hopefully the rain doesn't affect us that much, but we'll see what happens. I had the luxury of the upgraded 6.5 GT infotainment system on this Rogue Glide standard, but I wasn't going to need to use the GPS function. Jesse's instructions were pretty simple. Go past three stoplights, make a right on Hana Highway, and take the loop. And so it was pretty easy to get out of town and get to my destination. I'm doing about 50 miles an hour right now, which will mark about the fastest point of the entire day. Once you get on the main part of the road to Hana, the speed limit is about 25 miles an hour, but realistically with all the hairpin turns and everything, you never go more than about 10 to 15 miles an hour. The entire road to Hana is a little over 100 miles if you do the entire loop, which I wouldn't necessarily recommend. I'll get more into that later. But the entire loop that I did on this day was a little over 100 miles. And most people may look at that and think that they can knock it out in a couple hours. But with the speed limit and, and how technical and tight the turns are, I had a total riding time of about five hours when I did this loop. Tip number two, if you're able to, bring your own gear. I wasn't about to pack all my helmets and stuff on the airplane when we went to Hawaii, but I'm not really a half helmet guy. I used to be, but I don't really like half helmets anymore. I will say Jesse, the guy that rented us the bikes, he lent me his personal sunglasses, which was pretty dang awesome. That's like next level service. But yeah, the half helmet, it got by, it was fine for a day, but if you can get your own gear and ride with your own helmet and your own gloves, that's always the best. So something to think about if you're able to pack it to wherever your ride is. Tip number three, if you're gonna ride the road to Hana, I would definitely start early. I'd recommend starting at about seven o'clock. The problem I ran into is the rental place, the dealership didn't open up until 9 a.m. And so I couldn't start my ride until nine. It took me about 45 minutes through all the paperwork and everything. So I didn't get to start until about 9.45, which you know really cut into our riding and sightseeing. There's a lot of stops to, to take on the road to Hana. There's a lot of really cool beaches and things to stop at and check out. A lot of them we had to ride right by just because we didn't have the time to stop at everything. We stopped at the Ohei Gulch, or the, the Seven Sacred Pools, which I'll show you in just a minute, which is the main destination, the main attraction, but there's a lot of other cool places to stop along the way. Uh, what I would recommend, if you can, rent the bike the day before, park it at your hotel or whatever, and then just get an early start and get on the bike. It usually doesn't cost you anymore. I did a same day pickup and drop off on my bike, which was still the same cost as like a 24 hour rental. So if I had it to do it again, I would get the bike the day before, again, park it at my hotel, room and then just get up early the next morning and then return it before it closed the next day so I had it for about 24 hours and you won't get charged any more money and that way you can get an earlier start. So here's a map of the entire route that we took and we started right here at Maui Harley Davidson. It's in the city of Kahului. Uh, my pronunciation is probably terrible. Excuse my Hawaiian. But we started off here and we jumped on Hana Highway and this section right here is pretty smooth and straight, higher speeds, about 55 miles an hour is the speed limit through here. You've got Mama's Fish House right here, which we didn't eat at, but I hear it's one of the best restaurants on the island. If you're looking for really good fish, check out Mama's Fish House. Again, I wish I would've had time and I wish I would've had the opportunity to eat there. But then you, you come through here and then right about when you get past the Twin Falls Maui Waterfall, through this section, you're gonna get into like a real like technical, tight turns, a lot of single lane bridges where you have to wait for opposing traffic to, to cross bridges. I will say being on a motorcycle, it was pretty nice because you could squeeze through areas a lot quicker and things where you, you didn't get as nervous about you know, getting stuck in, in a situation where you had to back up and things like that. Uh, you know, I saw a couple Suburbans going through this, this road and 
you know, it was just really, really tight. So things are very, very tight through here, but this is also where you're gonna find just some of the most amazing scenic views I've ever seen in my life. I mean, it almost looks like it was like, pulled from a storybook, like the, just the waterfalls, every bridge you go over, you look to the right and left, there's waterfalls there, and just the most just heavy, dense, thick greenery and plant life you've ever seen in your life. And it's amazing how the climates just change and like the, the, the topical feel of everything. So you'll be going through here and it's like this beach coastal area with, with like coastal beach plant life. And then when you get through this rainforest area, like I said, it's just like really, uh, it's, it's almost raining all the time. We got very lucky on the day we went and there was hardly any rain, but it's usually raining on and off the entire day. And you just got this really dense, like jungle atmosphere on the side of a cliff with you know, tons of bridges and just you know, a lot of really cool plant life to look at. And then when you come through here to Hana, it's another kind of like coastal tropical area. And then when you get on like the south side of the island, it gets like a little bit drier and more of like prairie lands type of scenery. And then when you get up through here and you're coming back up through this road, then it's almost like you're in Ireland or something. It's just a kind of this uh, short plant life with like these like little stone brick walls everywhere. I, it just feels like you're in Ireland or something like that. But down here on the south side, of Maui right here. This is where things are kind of sketchy. It's kind of no man's land down here. There's not very many businesses. The roads get very, very tough down here. Up here at the top, the roads, even though they're technical, they're very well paved. They're very well maintained. And then when you get into Hana, the road up until Hana is all very, very good. Once you get down past Hana, that's when the road slowly but surely begins to get tighter. The, the, the condition of the road gets worse and eventually here when you, when you get past it past this kapu area or actually when you get when you get past the sacred pools of o o ohio then the road becomes dirt and the road is very very bad it's in very very bad condition the harley davidson isn't really the best vehicle for a road like this there's a lot of jeeps that we saw out this way um, if you had an adventure bike, it would probably be better. Um, so my recommendation is if you're not a strong rider, you should probably just go to Hana or maybe go to the sacred pools and then just turn around and backtrack the same way you came. But I would check with your rental operator or, or whoever if they're okay with uh, having a bike down here because I know a lot of rental places aren't okay with having a bike down here. I didn't find that out until after I had done the trip and I had told Maui Harley Davidson that I took the bike on the entire loop and I don't think they were too happy that I took it on the south part of Maui here. But I told them I, I took real good care of the bike and, and it was all good and I know what I'm doing. So they didn't mind but yeah, you, unless you're a really strong rider and you really know what you're doing, you get permission beforehand, I, I wouldn't recommend going past the seven sacred pools and going on the south side down here. Um, unless you're a cowboy and you just want to freaking go for it and you want an adventure and you don't mind a little bit of a bumpy ride, especially with me, with my passenger, my wife on the back, it got a little bit rough at times. I'm glad I did it though. I have absolutely no regrets. It was an awesome adventure.
What do you think of the ride so far, honey? I love it. Epic. How's your ass feel? A little sore. <laughs> so we're about halfway to Hana. Probably, well not probably, definitely the most lush, green, jungle-ish, if that's a word, road I've ever ridden on in my life. Wow, that road is amazing. Amazing. You feel like you're you feel like you're riding through Jurassic Park. It's such an awesome road. Bike's good. A lot of firsts, first and second gear riding. So a lot of clutch, a lot of braking, it's a lot of technical riding, your hands get tired. Definitely lives up to the hype the most picturesque road I've ever ridden on in my life. So we stopped off in Hana for some lunch. There's this little pop-up shop on the side of the road that was serving paninis. I don't have any footage of that. I have some on my Insta stories. If you guys haven't yet, follow me on Instagram. You can see my Insta stories of the road to Hana if you wanna check that out. But Hana is kind of the halfway point for us for the day. And we decided, because we were making pretty good time, we were going to go ahead and do the full loop at this point. Uh, before that, we had kind of tried to figure out if we were just going to go to Hana and backtrack the same way, or if we were going to go all in and we were going to do the entire loop. So here we are just kind of leaving Hana, and we're kind of going, making our way down to the seven sacred pools. My fourth tip that I would say for this ride is you just want to take it slow. A lot of people will ask, well, is the road dangerous? If you're paying attention and you're not going too fast, the road isn't that dangerous. I would say once you get down past the seven sacred pools, it does get rough, like I've already mentioned, but it's not really that dangerous per se because your speeds are relatively low. Uh, another thing is always respect the locals. There's a lot of locals that take this road every day to and from work and use it as a commuter road and you know if you take it to ride a Harley or whatever you may be on vacation well not everybody's on vacation on the island so respect locals let them pass if need be and, and just take it slow and the road will be relatively safe for you some statistics for you guys this road has over 600 hairpin turns and 59 single lane bridges so yeah definitely you want to take it slow and just taking the scenery. The bridges are my favorite part of the ride. As you saw a minute ago, I had a lot of footage of some of those single lane bridges, some of the most you know, amazing views going over those bridges. And, and what, like I said before, once you get below Hana, you get on these single lane roads and the further you go, kind of the worse the road conditions get. And there's a couple areas where there's a lot of blind turns as well. So going around these blind turns, you really want to go slow because there's, you're just on a single lane. So someone could be coming the opposite direction. We had a couple close calls as well where had I been going faster, we probably would have gotten in an accident. So take it slow, respect the locals, and ride within your ability level and you should be fine. So here we are arriving at the Ohio Gulch. I probably mispronounced that, but they call it the Seven Sacred Pools. This is a bridge that goes over a really long series of waterfalls into a bunch of different pools down there. And you can see a better kind of vantage point from here. But once you pass the bridge, there's like a state park, like parking lot area where it costs you money to park. I think it's like $20 for a motorcycle and $25 for a car. I can't remember exactly. But you park there and there's some really cool hiking trails you can hike down off to the cliffs and you can also hike up this really long trail it's about three miles long to a bamboo forest and a bunch of different waterfalls to take a look at as well trail that you can hike that's about four miles round trip that we don't really feel like we have time for so we're going to skip that that takes you up to a waterfall so we're going to go down to the gulch aka the seven pools seven sacred pools excuse me so we'll check that out 
So the bamboo forest is a mile away. We could probably do the bamboo forest, no problem. Yeah, I'll do that. Or the Kuloa Point Trail, Pools of Ohio. Do that real quick. You should have put your running shoes on for the jog. Kuloa Point Trail. Should be white trail. I think you should put your running shoes on and we should jog the whole thing. Alright, let's go. I can, I can jog with the sandals on. I'm gonna be tore up tomorrow. I'm not 25 anymore. That's alright. I'm freaking tough. I ride Harleys. I'm tough. Let's do this. Let's do everything. Let's just run it. Seven sacred pools right now. Pretty much the southeast side of Maui. This is pretty epic. You're not allowed to swim in the pool. Dive in. Let's find a spot to dive in. Oh yeah. There's the money. There's what we came for. That's the money shot. A big buck. The Wally Trail is. The Pippa Wally to the uh, bamboo forest. Let's go to the Pippa Wally. in the jungle we don't know if we will make it out at this point we're lost there's this very defined path made with rocks but we're still lost have no clue if we're gonna be able to make it out of here alive we're gonna follow the path with the rocks and hopefully it leads us out of here are you scared no plenty of coconuts plenty of leaves for toilet paper i'm good we got food and toilet paper, we're good. We got the essentials. We got fresh Hawaiian water. Oh, it's a trail sign. I think, I think we're okay. I think we're okay, we found a trail sign. The Mahili One Family Story. Good job, good pronunciation. My Hawaiian was on point of that one? That's pretty good. Awesome. Should we buy real estate here? It's a beautiful piece of property right there. Let me know guys if you freaking hate it when someone steps on the back of your sandal. Gives you a flat tire. I hate that. Get away. Get away. How much further up is the bamboo forest? Another yeah, half a mile, I don't know. At most, another half. Uh, I'm all acting like you're the tour guide. Yeah. How much longer, dude? Yeah. <laughs> I'm turning around. Can you guys? Oh, mostly locals that go to that beach? Seems like, yeah, it seems like a good mix. Huh. Everyone we talked to was. I don't know why people get food off, There's one old man who's like, you know, walking around. He's <laughs> like, okay. He took he took photos with you. He was buck naked taking no, photos with you. Oh, okay. Like the, uh, one of the guys from <laughs> you guys go to the bamboo forest. Yeah. How, how, how much further up? Twenty. Okay, we can make it. Thirty more minutes. Get the bamboo. Bamboo is quicker. Waterfall. Oh, okay. Yeah. Okay, cool. Thanks, man. This is the bridge that leads into the entrance of the bamboo forest. This, in combination with the seven sacred pools, make this like national park area the best stop uh, on the entire road to Hana. So if you had to just stop in one place, definitely stop here. 
but this is a really, really scenic trail where you can see a bunch of different waterfalls and pools off to the edges of the trail. And in just a minute, we're going to be going into the bamboo forest, which is also a really cool area. We're entering the bamboo forest. decided to turn around at this point it was about another mile or two to like a big waterfall at the end of the trail and we decided that we didn't want to take the time and, and effort to get there we wanted to kind of get back on the road before it got dark we were worried about our timing and getting back to the dealership by six o'clock to return the motorcycle so this trail was really really cool though I highly recommend it if you're on Maui it's kind of a must do all right we're going through the haunted bamboo forest here Appreciate the sound effects, sounds good. So like I said, we decided not to turn back. We decided to continue to go on uh, along the southern rim of Maui. I believe this highway is called Pialani Highway. So it turns from Hana Highway to Pialani Highway. Hopefully I'm pronouncing that correctly but this is where the road gets really rough and really narrow. It turns into a dirt road in many sections. Like I said, a big heavy cruiser, Harley Davidson, like a road glider, isn't really well suited for this type of road, but if you take it slow, it's very doable. But like I said, there's a lot of feathering and slipping the clutch on this road, a lot of really slow stuff, some loose gravel quite a bit. And so if you're not a real confident, strong rider on, on a Harley, I, I probably wouldn't take this road. I'd probably backtrack. But it is a little bit shorter once you've reached this point than backtracking. But if you give yourself plenty of time in the day and you leave early, like I told you, you should have plenty of time to make it back. But I didn't regret it, like I said. Some of the roads are really cool. It definitely adds an extra layer and element of adventure to the entire thing. And it was really cool just to see another area of the island. And again, like I said before, it was cool to see how the greenery and the plant life really changed on this side of the island. It was almost like we went to a different island altogether, just the scenery and everything changed so much. But the roads are in very bad shape down here. A lot of them are falling off the cliffs. A lot of them are deteriorating. There was one point on the trek where the road had completely fallen off the cliff and there were two metal plates that we had to drive over to, to get by. And so just a lot of real slow pace, rough stuff, a lot of blind turns and things. So yeah, we just had to take it really slow, but once you, you get about 10 to 15 miles on this bad road, then it clears up and you get road again and, and it becomes nice again. So we're on like the edge of paradise right now, guys. We are on the south side of Maui. And yeah, this, the views are absolutely amazing. The south side of Maui, this road that we're on, is super sketchy though. A lot of dirt roads, a lot of rocks, gravel, tons of potholes and stuff. Single lane roads, so you have oncoming traffic coming at you on blind turns. So 
If you're a beginner rider, I definitely would not recommend this. Uh, really, this roads, Harleys are not built for this type of road. I mean, you need like an adventure bike for the south side road of, of Maui here on this, because we're doing the entire loop. If you want to stick to paved roads, it's probably best if you just go to Hana and then just go back the north side. But, oh man, this has been quite the adventure. This is pretty dang epic. Sun's starting to go down. Road glide's been good. A little bit bumpy, especially riding two up with the wife here. Had to use the ABS a little bit coming into this dirt here. Sandstorm picking up. Oh, there's a car coming, okay. So once you're done traveling that southern border of Maui, the roads start getting a lot better. Once you make that right-hand turn and you round the bend and start traveling north again, the roads get really nice and paved like you see here. The further up north you get, the better the road conditions get as well. So this is a really nice spot here. The further north you get, the wider the roads get, and they also get a lot more busy as well. So. This is kind of in between those two places. This is a really nice section of road. My final tip would be is just make sure you give yourself enough time and don't be traveling on this road after dark. You wanna make sure you make the entire trip in the day and that you don't get caught, especially on that southern border, that southern road at night. I heard that a lot of crazies and, and druggies come out at night down there. That's kind of no man's land down there. So just give yourself plenty of time and just don't travel on the road at night. made it back guys so we did about 110 miles we went we did the full loop the whole road to Hana it was it, it was not for the faint of heart it, this was this thing kind of kicked my butt a little bit the south side of the island that road that runs along the south side of the island is just really bad road it's like first gear feathering the clutch the whole way tons of uh, dirt road stuff more suited for like an adventure bike. Although, dude, it was still a lot of fun. Had the, especially with the wife on the back. Uh, it was still a ton of fun, but uh, sketch. It was. I'd do it again. Okay, wow, well, she'd do it again. That's pretty good. But the road glide held up pretty well. The road glide did pretty good. So, no complaints there about the road glide. But uh, yeah, we're back here at Maui Harley Davidson. And uh, the bike ran great. We got to some pretty remote remote areas out there where you didn't see anybody. And it was like, wow, am I ever gonna get back to civilization? And uh, yeah, the mileage wasn't that much, but when you're on these real like small one lane roads where you're like always worried about oncoming traffic coming the opposite direction around blind turns. Yeah, just the speeds just makes everything a lot longer. So it was cool though, we had a lot of fun. Definitely one for the history books. Definitely one of the most scenic, no, it's, it's by far the most scenic road, route or road I've ever been on in my life. By far, it was crazy. We went to like this lush uh, forest, like jungle area. Then you'd be on like these like open plains areas. Then you'd look, be going through something that looked like you were like in England or Ireland. It, like change like an ecosystem every like hour or so. So yeah, it was just really cool. A lot of cool spots. Thanks a lot for watching the video guys, I really appreciate it. I love all the love and support that my subscribers and viewers give me, so thank you very much. I had a lot of fun doing this ride and editing this video. If you enjoyed it, give me a thumbs up. If you haven't already, please subscribe to my channel. If you're looking for a bike in Southern California, new or used, come see us at Laidlaw's Harley-Davidson. We're celebrating 60 years this year. We're the oldest dealership in Southern California in Los Angeles County. So come see us. Thanks again for watching, guys. Take care. Bye-bye.